Good morning, good morning, peaceful warriors. All my teammates out there, forgive the darkness, it is morning time. I'm up a little early again. And I wanted to talk about hanging up the hangups because it's coordination week this week for us. And coordination really starts with yourself, right? So let me ask you this question. Do you treat the person in your mirror with the same love and respect that you treat your most loved people around you? I mean, most of you, I hope, wouldn't tell your kids that they were stupid or worthless, right? I mean, unless you were one of my parents, but let's not get into that. Most of you wouldn't tell your spouse that they were ugly and fat, so why would you tell yourself those things in the mirror? Don't get hung up on the negatives in yourself. You gotta, if you're gonna get hung up on anything, get hung up on the things you're good at. Confidence doesn't come from assuming you're better at things than you really are. Confidence is earned and comes from knowing exactly where your limits are and being completely honest and transparent about what you can do and what you can't do. I tell my students all the time if there's something I struggle with or something I'm not good at, and this is one of them. This is one of the things I'm not good at myself is treating that person in the mirror with the same kind of love and respect that I would treat my wife or my son. Hey, Justin, good to see you this morning. So how about you, Justin? Do you treat the person in the mirror with the same kind of love and respect you treat your family? That you love them other people that you love the most, whether it's your friends, family, whoever it might be. I mean, that stuff is ultra important. Of course, I just asked Justin a question and he's probably driving to work. Don't answer that, Justin, if you're driving. Don't answer that. My bad. I won't put you in danger. So, step one, when we talk about coordination week, you got to learn to treat the person in the mirror with the same love and respect that you would treat your loved ones, right? Would you make fun of what they're wearing? Would you call them fat? Would you call them worthless? Would you call them stupid? Would you call them dumb? Because if not, then why are you doing that to yourself, right? Learn to show love to yourself and it helps you learn to show better love to others. Now, this is something I've got to work on myself. It's something I've been working on for years because I used to wake up every day from the ages of seven to about six, seven, to about 14 years old. I used to wake up every day and it made me feel better to just repeat the mantra that it's okay, it's just not my day, I'm worthless. I used to say that all the time. I'd say it over and over before I get on the bus to school. It's okay that I'm worthless. It's okay that I'm worthless. It's okay that I don't get along. It's okay that I'm weird. It's okay that I'm a freak. Those are not good things to be saying to yourself in the mirror, but I woke up for years between the ages of like seven and 14. Of course, my mama had like three jobs, so I had to get myself ready for school, get my own breakfast and all that. And I was one of those that hated going to school, not because I didn't love to learn, that was actually the part that I loved about school. It was the other people that I went to school with that I had problems with, because I, I didn't connect with them in any way, shape, or form. It took me till I was probably 15 or 16 to find some people in my life who accepted me for who I was, and we connected over the fact that we read the same genre of books. So which leads me to number two. Number two, hang up the hangups when it comes to other people. So, so many times it, we have such a hard time coordinating with each other because we get so hung up on the differences between us. Well, that person goes to a different church. That person don't believe what I believe. That person didn't come from my background. That person didn't blah, 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 blah right? So, so many people get hung up on those hangups about what is different between us. But now, let me ask you, how easy is it to have a good, solid conversation with yourself where you learn something and push yourself to get better? It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's really, really not. So instead of getting hung up on the differences in beliefs 
uh, philosophies or whatever it is between you and other people, those are exactly the things we should be celebrating. Now, I'm not talking not talking about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about them, though that's kind of been a family rule in my family for many, many years. There's certain things you just don't talk about to people until you've known them for a certain amount of time and you can trust the fact that they're not going to suddenly turn on you because you have a differing opinion about something, right? Because the only person's opinion about yourself that should matter is your own, number one. But that's neither here nor there. When you're talking about coordinating with others, talking about working together, then I see so many people who can't work together well because they hung up on the fact that they like different things. They hung up on the fact that they got different fandoms. They hung up on the yeah, fandoms. I know words. I know geek stuff. <laughs> they hung up on the fact that, that they're different when in all reality, that's the things that make conversations interesting if we can have them with respect and compassion. Which kind of leads me to a story. Y'all want to hear a story this early in the morning? I don't know. Some of y'all probably don't want to hear one of my stories this early in the morning. And it's not a made-up story. This is a true story. It just happened a few weeks ago. So, it was, uh, oh man, it was around 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Oh, hang on, I got a, had an alarm going off that probably made y'all not be able to hear me. Anyway, it was about 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, two, three, maybe it was four weeks ago now, and I get a knock on the door, right? Now, I don't have regular air conditioning, right? Like regular central air conditioning. We got window units, and you just don't come to my house unannounced. Um, if you do, be ready. So I answer the door in nothing but a pair of boxer shorts and the button in the front, y'all know what I mean, there's a button in the front of boxer shorts, wasn't even done up, right? And nothing else, right? I got that and my necklace and a hat on because I'm weird like that. And there's these two people in suits, well, a gentleman and a young lady, not a, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, like not teenager, not young, young, right? right? But a young adult lady. And they give me that, that Jehovah's Witness question. Have you blah, blah, blah. I can't even remember exactly what it is they asked. And I don't want to try to quote something and misquote exactly what they said. But you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Every one of y'all have had that, that Jehovah's Witness moment. And one, I don't care what I believe in versus what you believe in. If you knock on my door unannounced at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning, you better be ready to listen to my sales pitch before I'm going to listen to yours. <laughs> That's just how I, I'm an entrepreneur. That's just how I roll, right? So they give me that question and instantly I had this funny thought to me, which was, I wonder how a Jehovah's Witness feels when Jehovah's Witnesses knock on their door at nine o'clock on Saturday morning. But anyway, that was my first thought. My second thought was, y'all making a lot of assumptions about me with this question you asking me. So I answered their question with a question of my own. I said, have you heard of teammate children's stories? <laughs> they looked at me kind of funny. I was like, here, let me get my phone. I run back in, I get my phone, I come back out. I start talking to them about stuff you've heard me talk about on these live videos before. I start talking about the importance of teaching kids compassion and this, that, and the other. And uh, the gentleman, he just, he stood there listening, quite intrigued, actually. The lady was getting a little bit perturbed with me, and it could be by the fact that I was wearing nothing but a pair of boxer shorts that wasn't even done up in the front. But it's in my house and my porch that you just walked up on, nine o'clock on Saturday morning. My son, Axel, had went with uh, Brittany to the school. I was at home by myself lounging. You're just gonna have to deal with that, right? So every time she tries to bring it back and be like, well, I think that, you know, you could be saved better by our church and come to our hall or blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, you know what's more important to me? What's going on right now? And she said, well, what do you think is going to happen to you after you die? I said, well, you know, honestly, I don't care what's going to happen to me after I die. What I do care about is the impact I'm having right now. And I want you to look on my phone right here and check out this app I got. You see, because I feel like there's not enough compassion in the world these days. I feel like we don't do a good enough job teaching our kids the proper ways of discipline without punishment and things like that. And I'm not talking about positive parenting and all that level, but you guys know how I am. Discipline means always do your best, that sort of thing. So I'm giving her those spiels. I'm making them listen to my stories. I'm up there reading my stories to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Every time she cuts me off, finally I was like, look here, you want to come up here and give me my sales pitch on my porch? Then you're going to have, or give me your sales pitch on my porch. You're going to have to listen to my sales pitch first, right? Now the guy ends up getting, the, oh, the gentleman ends up getting 
getting pretty intrigued. Me and him started having a discussion about philosophy that had absolutely nothing to do with religion, and I actually ended up enjoying that discussion with that young man. Or I say young man. <laughs> Honestly, uh, he was probably twice my age, if we're honest. But it's weird that I said, I, why do I talk like that? I guess I'm just, I've been, I've been old since I was like 14. Um, so... So I ended up having a conversation with him and the lady, she just kept getting more and more perturbed, more and more irritated, kept trying to come back around to talk about their church. And every time she started talking about the church, I started talking about my teammate children's stories. <laughs> every time she started talking about their kingdom hall, I'm like, she's like, you know, talking about how we all need to get together into these congregations so that we can learn to work together. It's like, you know what? I agree. We do need to learn how to work together better. We do need to learn how to coordinate better. So check out these teammate children's stories on coordination. I wrote this one right here called Surprise Attack Fly. Here, let me read it to you, right? I'm, I'm doing this to a minute and it really did kind of really perturb that lady. The gentleman found it interesting and me and him got into a lot of interesting conversation that is related to a lot of things I talk about in these live videos. And by the end of it, he totally showed me respect every time that I said look if you want me to hear your pitch you're gonna have to listen to mine first he totally showed me the respect on that good morning miss Shirley we talking about um, we talking about coordination believe it or not but I'm telling a little story about some Jehovah's Witnesses that came to my door and uh, were a little offended by the fact that I answered in boxer this is nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and she was mostly offended by the fact that I wasn't listening to her so she finally gets so offended with me that she says you're not even listening to what I'm saying and I said so why should I listen to what you're saying until you're willing to listen to what I'm saying if you ain't willing to listen to, to, to have the patience to accept me and come to me on my terms since you are standing on my porch after all then why on earth should I listen to whatever it is you got to say what wisdom do you have that I don't you tell me something, and I'd already been talking for like an hour about my teammate stories at this point. I said, what is it that you know that I don't? What is it that you can teach me about compassion after I done read three of my compassion from stories, some teammate children's stories to her? And she goes, well, it ain't about that. I said, what's it about then? And she just went silent. She said, well, well, it's about teaching people to be better people with each other. I said, what do you think this is about? She goes, yeah, but I'm talking about saving people after they die. I said, I'm talking about saving people while they live. We on the same team, and you just get mad at me and hung up over the fact that we go about it in different Different ways and this made that old gentleman just crack up laughing he was belly laughing like doubled over that's right it was my porch so you go listen to my pitch he was cracked up laughing at my response to that uh, and he was like you know what he was like you you seem to, to get it better than anyone else I've ever talked to and actually he ended up asking me to come out and give a speech at Kingdom Hall to which their Kingdom Hall or whatever you know Jehovah's Witness of, to which she turned around and said there is no way we are having a guy like him come out and speak and he turned and looked at her and was like that is exactly the kind of guy that needs to be speaking at our place so guess what I'm doing uh, here in about two weeks I'm going to give a speech at their Kingdom Hall so I think it's pretty cool right uh, but yeah I always thought it was funny that was my first thought though what does a Jehovah's Witness think when a Jehovah's Witness knocks on their door at 9 o'clock in the morning and asks them what they think is going to happen after they die? I was like, what an odd question for a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm over here trying to watch cartoons. You know, uh, this is not the time I want to be thinking about this kind of stuff. So let's go back, recap what we were talking about right here, right? So we were talking about step one on hanging up the hangups. Do you treat the person in the mirror as well as you treat the loved ones around you? If you wouldn't call your kid stupid, if you wouldn't call your spouse ugly, if you wouldn't call your father worthless, then stop trying to tell those things to the person in the mirror. Now, I am one of the world's worst about this. I get hung up in my own head and I have to remind myself constantly, daily, and every morning to hang up those hangups. Because like I said, between the ages of seven and eight, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, all the way up to about 14, 15, I got up with the mantra of going, it's okay that I'm worthless. It's okay that I'm a freak and it's just not gonna be my day and that's okay too. And I used to say my, that to myself over and over, I mean at least a thousand times before I even got on the bus every morning. And you wanna know where I got that? Because my mother would say those things. My mother would say those things. Uh, uh, other kids my age would say those things to me. And I started to believe those things. So for years, I told myself those things in the mirror until I hit puberty. And it wasn't until I hit puberty that I finally decided to start fighting back against it in my head. I started to fight back against the the natural inner inner monologue inner voice 
that I had going on because that's just not a healthy way to start your day. And I was doing it to myself at a very sensitive and young age. So you got to hang up those hang ups by first recognizing, are you showing the same love and respect to the person in the mirror as you would show to your own children and family? Number two, coordinate with others. You got to hang up the hang ups when it comes to the differences between you and the people around you. That's what patience is all about to accept accept the person for who they are what they believe in where they're at in their life is not your life your their life is not your responsibility their beliefs are not your responsibility and i actually told that lady that too i said you know my belief is not your responsibility my life is my experience so my beliefs are my responsibility you may feel like you have a responsibility to tell me about your beliefs and that's okay that's perfectly acceptable but you can't sit there and tell me about your beliefs and then tell me that i'm not allowed to talk about mine like i said in that story and i said that that man the the gentleman is doubled over laughing laughed so hard when i told her i wasn't worried about what happened when i died i'm worried about what happened in today and uh i like that guy i really like that guy so (laughs) <laughs> it's just strange because you know normally they can be pretty annoying type people knocking on your door at eight or nine o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Are you kidding me? Jeez, I was just happened to just got up and went straight to straight to work at my desk. I hadn't got dressed yet. You're just gonna have to deal with the fact that I'm in boxers and a sock cap, you know. And I don't do the button up in the front of the boxes. I don't know a single I don't know a single gentleman that does. Any any guys on here? I think Justin already went to work, so he ain't on here no more. But any guys on here? Do y'all ever actually do up that button? No, because it gets in the way when you gotta when you gotta do your business, right? So so you just like you come to my porch at nine o'clock in the morning and you didn't call first, you didn't text me and say you was coming. I am not gonna run around getting dressed while you knocking on the porch, right? So I'm talking about hang up the hang ups, and it's the same thing I was trying to tell that lady. If you want want to be able to work together with others and you've got to be able to trade information the only way that you can trade information is celebrating the differences between the two of you not hating each other for the differences between the two of you which I don't know why that seems like such a foreign concept to so many people. Oh, they go to a different church. I can't get along with them. Oh, they do this. I can't get along with them. I've had students, guys. I had a student that I have for five years. Five years years who was very open about uh, uh, their their philosophies their beliefs and everything I had many many philosophical di- uh, discussions that I absolutely loved with this gentleman until one day he heard me say something out of context and then a- approached me in a class a room full right there's like 50 people in this room and loudly confronted me that there was a piece of the things I believe in that was different from something that something his pastor had said. And I turned to him and I said, your pastor's not my daddy. Your pastor is not in control of my life. He's not in control of your life too, and you're not in control of my life. I said, this is not the type of discussion that is to be had here right now in front of everybody yelling at me across the room we can have this discussion elsewhere in a private time in a private matter another time a week later i approached them about having that discussion and they left me they left me as a student all because they couldn't get over the hang-ups of the fact that there was slight one very slightly differing thing in something that we that in our belief system and i was like wow Wow, so instead of learning from each other so we can accept each other, teach each other, work together, have fun together like we had been doing for five years previous, all of a sudden, bam, right? One small difference they realize between me and them, he realizes between me and him, and he gets so hung up on that that he quits. He absolutely quits as a student, quits the activity, quits everything. And the odd thing is, is I run into some of his family members sometimes and they, they miss us so much. And they're like, oh, I want to come back, you know, but so-and-so still has a little, uh, you know. And and it's frustrating to me to see other people held back just because of the differences. Celebrate the differences in others. You ever tried to have a conversation with yourself? I have conversations with myself a lot. But how long do, how long do those conversations last? and how interesting do they really get, right? You're never going to be able to gain knowledge 
by having conversations with yourself. You gain insight into yourself, but you're not going to gain an outside perspective without having an actual outside perspective sitting next to you that you can that you can speak to and and treat them in a calm and respectful and compassionate manner so that you can trade that information, right? So that's all it is. That's the theme of the day. That's the theme of the week. Hang up the hangups. Hang up your hangups about yourself. Let it go. Let it go. Hang up the hang up. I never even seen Frozen, believe it or not. I lucked out on that one because my son was only like two when Frozen was released, maybe three when it came out. I can't remember. And I managed to somehow hide him from the fact that that movie existed. <laughs> Parent win. Sorry. That was parenting win for me. Um, so hang up the hang ups when it comes to yourself. If you wouldn't tell your children they're worthless, don't tell yourself they're worthless. If you do tell your children they're worthless, then you ain't no better than my mother. And honestly, I would love to have a very serious discussion with you privately, uh, if possible, and your family as well, and see what we can do to try to help you out. But to get a different perspective, because usually that kind of action comes from, like I know in the case of my mother, it comes from the fact that that's the way she felt about herself. Those are the kind of things she said about herself, but she couldn't take feeling that way about herself. So she made me as a six year old, seven year old, eight year old feel that way about myself so that she could feel like she had a way to exercise control over somebody else because she felt like there was no control. She had no control over anything else in her life, which I can understand. She had to work three jobs to get by and all of that right and I see it happen I have students right now who have parents in that same situation who exercise who try to exercise this strange sort of control over their children by forcing their children to try to like things their children don't like not because that person likes those things either but just because they want to show that they can control that person and I and usually that comes from the fact that they feel like they can't control anything else around them and so if they feel like they can't control themselves they will try to displace and control somebody else this is just basic psychology one-on-one and it's something I see unfortunately far too often so if I just called you if you feel called out by that maybe take a good look at yourself maybe I am calling you out by that maybe I'm not that's your opinion not mine and it's not my responsibility again that's the other part of the second part of this hang up the hang ups with other people their beliefs are not your responsibility their background is not your responsibility the way that they take the things you say that's not that's not your responsibility teaching them certain things is not your responsibility making them like you is not your responsibility same thing with your kids they are separate people let them be their people right i could tell you like it took up until like five years ago for my father to stop trying to convince me to get a real job right if i went and at any point in time oh my gosh it got so annoying because i love talking to my father on the phone but it got to the point that i would go months without talking to him on the phone and then he'd get mad be like why you never call me i'd be like that because every time i call you you negative at me you put me down for the fact that i'm pursuing a dream and a goal just because you never pursued it just because you don't think i can do it but i do and when i finally told him about that he I finally told him that he finally kind of shut up on it but um it's still been a little bit of a thing right every time i go up there it's almost like he really tried to make me feel like it don't matter how successful i get or how how much i accomplish that i'm still just his son if that makes sense you know and put me down in that way same kind of thing people don't like to feel like other people are better than them they certainly don't like to feel like their kids are better than them so if you got a if you're a parent you got to get over that hang up too you got to get over that jealousy if your kid is able to do something you can't if your kid knows something you don't if your kid comes up with a wisdom that you don't understand that teaches you something in life then don't don't like negative that out of them don't do that don't do that let them grow let them be them let them be better than you that's how we evolve that's how your lineage evolves right that's how martial arts evolves everything that we do and if you want to hear my funny story about jehovah's witnesses a few weeks ago you have to go back in that video and watch it but I am curious now, what do you guys think? What do you guys think a Jehovah's Witness feels like if a Jehovah's Witness knocks on their door at 8 or 9 a.m. on Saturday morning? I've been pondering that question ever since. It's a strange question to ask, I know. And I've got nothing against Jehovah's Witnesses. That's not my thing. I mean, I'm actually going to go give a talk to that speak, uh, to their hall or whatever. I actually enjoyed uh, having the philosophical discussion that I had with the gentleman that came to the door. But it cracked me up, the lady, how offended she kept getting 
at the fact that I kept redirecting the conversation to be about today and teaching kids today and I kept redirecting the conversation to be about compassion and respect and discipline and coordination when all she wanted to do was convince me that because I didn't go to their whatever hall all the time that I was going somewhere bad after I died and I'm laughing in her face like I ain't worried about that I'm worried about today I'm worried about tomorrow I'm worried about the impact I make on other people to which the gentleman is like I feel like that's more important anyway to worry about because that's kind of the path that we supposed to be on right and that's what he kept saying but even she got so perturbed Oh man, the look she gave him when he started laughing. I'll give that part of the story again. Oh, well, that was pretty much the part of the story right there is when I told her that, the, the look she gave him when he started laughing. She walked back to the end of the driveway and me and him continued to talk and laugh for about another half an hour. He was actually a pretty cool dude. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off here because I have to run all over the city today on top of have a lot of work, but make sure that you check out uh, Fox 25 tonight if you happen to watch the news uh, uh, they Shelby Love from Fox 25 is supposed to be coming out to our parkour class at 5 o'clock doing two live segments one at 510 and one at 540 p.m. And we got two live segments happening about our parkour pro our basics of parkour programs and our martial arts programs and other things so that's gonna be super super awesome plus I got some really cool videos from our last capoeira class because I understand like a lot of the stuff I've been posting about cop our capoeira program so far makes it look very very intimidating makes it look very very difficult because I've been posting a lot of stuff that's the advanced stuff the stuff that you don't really get into until you're in year four or five and you never have to get into and so what I did Saturday was took a lot of videos of some of some basics and some easy cool stuff um, so show people that anybody can do it you know anybody can start everybody starts somewhere everybody's a beginner some of us have just been beginning longer than others that's just how it is I'm still a beginner even in martial arts even though I've been doing it for oh gosh because I added it all up at one point because I was on and off you know so when I added it all up back to my very first martial arts class not counting the times that I was the years that I was out of martial arts just the years I was in martial arts I've got a little less than 20 years a little less than 20 years invested um, in my martial arts knowledge and I still feel like a beginner all the time there's always another guy out there that knows more than you I say guy another person out there that knows more than you there's always another person out there you can learn from but you can't learn from nobody if you're hung up on the differences between the two of you you've got to learn to be so confident in yourself to admit that you don't know something be so confident in yourself that you can admit when someone else is smarter than you better than you or whatever about something then approach them respectfully in a way that allows you to learn from them and you'd be amazed that they might learn from you as well I was up at a different parkour gym that's up in Oklahoma City on uh, Sunday and there was a guy in there and he was helping me work on my slant gainer and then I mentioned something about how I'd been working on my rise kicks and I was having trouble with a certain with doing low rise kicks because low rise kicks is what I've been working on and he was like oh lows with low rise kicks are pretty easy so he gave me some advice on my lows rise kicks and then turn around he was like you know what's hard is I have a hard time doing high rises I was like, really, man? I just watched you do slant gainers, slant aerials, and all kinds of stuff, and a high rise kick is difficult to you? If you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, that should have been should have been an easy technique for someone of his caliber, in my opinion. So I just gave him a little bit of advice. I watched him do it a couple times, gave him a little bit of advice about his takeoff and his swing through, and boom, he had the high rise kick. We were able to share knowledge, and now I'm gonna be sharing knowledge with him about social media advertising, which psychology is social media advertising, something I've studied for 10 years. So me and him gonna start to get getting together once a week so that I can teach him how to build his business, which is, hasn't even had its grand opening yet because he's still building their, uh, their, what do you call it, their equipment. A lot of their equipment has to be homemade because you can't just buy the type of equipment they need. And so they're still finishing out and haven't technically opened yet. But it's still a pretty cool place if you ever want to check it out. It's way over on the other side of the city, though. It's quite a drive. But it makes a bit of an escape. I take an axle out there once a week so he can run around and jump in their foam pits and work on his flips and stuff like that, which he's getting really close on a couple himself, uh, especially that slant gainer. 
Anyway, I've gotten way off topic now. Topic now. So hang up the hang-ups. Hang up your own hang-ups about yourself. If you're going to get hung up on anything, get hung up on the positive. Talk positive about yourself. Talk positive about others and celebrate the differences in others. Coordination and working together is one of the many ways that you can be the best teammate that you can be to be the best at being you. Have a good morning.